Welcome back everybody. In this session we're going to talk about how we can load data into a file geodatabase and then load that data from the file geodatabase into my new map. So if you recall from last session we created a new project and in that project we inserted a new map. So what we'll need to do first now is find some data that we want to work with and I'm going to be working with uh, the shapefile data that we talked about earlier. That's all these shapefiles here. If you would like to work along with me, you can go to O Student Construction Instructors, Rick Dukesher, in the Shared Data folder under Maps 315, there will be a Utah Shapefile zip file. So you can copy that file and extract it and work along with me if you choose. Now what I want to do is I want to take that Utah shapefile data, all these shapefiles here, and I would like to uh, eventually bring them into my map uh, under the contents pane. But in order to do that, what I'll have to do is I'll have to check the catalog and uh, let's go through a couple of uh, elements here in the catalog. All of these categories are associated with the current project that I have open. For instance, under the maps folder, you can see I have one map and that's the map that I have loaded here. I also have a database folder. So this is my default file geodatabase. And uh, if you go take a look under File Explorer, under that project folder that you created, there's that file geodatabase. So you shouldn't change the extension. If you want to rename that default file geodatabase, you can rename it here. So I can simply come in here and call this uh, something like Utah in that case. And if you would like, you can also right click on that file geodatabase and go properties. And under the properties, it'll show you where that file geodatabase is located. So let's go ahead and add some data to that file geodatabase. It's quite straightforward. We just right click on the file geodatabase itself in the catalog pane. If you don't see the catalog pane, again, you can go to the view tab and bring the catalog pane up this way. So let's right click on our file geodatabase and we're gonna import uh, a feature class. So we can do one at a time or we can do multiple. So if we do one at a time, it'll ask us to uh, find and locate the geodatabase that we wanna work with. So I'll browse out to my input features. And remember, I can only import one uh, file, ge one feature class at a time. So I'm gonna browse to where my shape files are stored at and I've got them in a folder called Utah Shape Files. And what I'll do is I'll select, for instance, Ski Area Boundaries first. I'll add that as one single shape file. It'll ask me for the output location, so I want to import that into my default file geodatabase, which is called Utah GDB, and it asks me to give it a name. So I can call this Ski Boundaries. I can call it the same as the original name, or I can change that up. If we won't worry about any of the expressions for now, but uh, if we have a output feature class name, we can go ahead and select run, and that will work through to import that feature class into my file geodatabase. So this is my geo processing window. You can see I can close that if you like, and if I take a look at my new file geodatabase, you'll notice that my ski boundaries have been uh, imported into that file geodatabase. Also notice by default, it loads it automatically into my map. So I have one map in this project, it's called State Plane, and that State Plane uh, map contains one feature class, which is called Feature Ski Boundary. Now if we take a look at the feature class in the File Geo database and right click on it and go into the properties, there's a number of different uh, categories here we can take a look at. For instance, this feature class is a geometry type of polygons. A feature class can only contain one single type of geometry and it can either be polygon, point, or line, but it can't be multiple at the same time. Now, let's take a look at the spatial reference system. So in this case, our projection for that feature class in the shapefile format was in a UTM system. If you recall from our previous session, we right-clicked on our map, went into properties, and we told ArcGIS Pro that we would like this map to use a state plane coordinate system. So what happens is when you load in ski boundaries and add it to your map, it will reproject it from, in this case, a UTM system into a state plane system. 
If you can't find your data, you can right click on your feature class and you can go zoom to layer and it will take you to that layer. So in this case, uh, there it is and you can uncheck it and turn it off. If you don't see the layer on your screen, chances are it might be below your base map. So if your base map is on top, you will not be able to see it. So what you should do is either turn off your base map or probably a better idea is to drag the ski boundaries above the base map something like that. Now if you have a whole bunch of feature classes to load in, you can do them multiple uh, at a time by going import, feature class multiple, and then browsing out and selecting the remainder of your feature classes like that. Say OK and uh, make sure the output geodatabase is correct and say run. And in this case it will give it the same names as the original shape files. Say run, it will import all of that data into your file geodatabase. And if you're loading in multiple feature classes, notice that it does not add it to your contents, so you'll have to do that yourself manually. If you don't see your feature classes listed, just right click on your feature geodatabase or your file geodatabase, sorry, and go refresh. And then you can select the feature classes by holding in your shift and control key and just dragging it into the data frame window. And there will be your data set that you've loaded in. Thanks for watching. Bye now.